We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I'm very excited to welcome our next guest on the interview series, Andrew Ives. He's the Director of Culture and Talent Development at Fusion Medical Staffing. Andrew, so good to see you. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly we answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Definitely. Christina, thank you so much for having me on. Um, again, Andrew Ives, uh, I've been at Fusion for almost three years now. It's been an absolutely wild ride and have so been so kind of blessed to be a part of it. And when I grew up, uh, my question and kind of answer to that question was always, hey, I want to be a finance guy. I never actually knew what that meant. However, I knew that I loved numbers. I knew that I loved people. And my background is, is a tad unique in that I do come from a finance and accounting background, uh, spent a little over eight years in that space at Deloitte uh, before transferring over to Fusion. And Fusion, again, in my current role, really allows me to take that training and leadership buckets that I had uh, in my previous role and enjoyed so much. And I get to put them into use every single day. That's exciting. And I, I have to ask for kind of talent development and culture. It's in the uh, interview series title for Reimagining Company Culture. How are you thinking about measuring this dynamic thing of company culture, both in a qualitative and quantitative way, especially as the team continues to grow at such a, a fast rate? Yeah, definitely. Uh, something, and I really think that culture is one of the hardest things to measure. Um, when I first started in this role, our CEO and I actually, we sat down and said, hey, how can we best measure success in this new role, um, kind of created from scratch uh, up on a whiteboard? And our initial meeting led us to exactly one answer, and that was gut feel. Didn't exactly love it, uh, especially my old accounting finance roots, uh, where metrics and everything drove a lot of what I did. But We've definitely pivoted and advanced this uh, in the last kind of year and a half through various either third party culture surveys, uh, other data, but really the most impactful measure for me uh, continues to be keeping a pulse on culture through having great relationships, uh, transparency and open communication with all of our people. Yeah, effective communication, being transparent, and I think that speaks to trust as well in all kinds of relationships at the organization too, with your team, with your manager, uh, with directors and senior leadership, and everyone really has a role to play in cultivating a great place to work. Uh, your CEO does not uh, kind of dictate what the company culture is or your, your last new hire as well. It's really everybody. What is your unique role as director of culture and talent development to foster that really great place to work? Thanks, Christina. Yeah, that was uh, a great point true, about how every single person really impacts culture. And that's something we definitely pride ourselves with at Fusion. Again, how every single person can make an impact there. Fusion has been around for about 13 years here. And something we do a great job with is really honoring and respecting the various cultures we have among each one of our teams. Um, we've got numerous sales teams, numerous non-sales teams, and the way in which, again, even a lot of those sales teams or non-sales teams operate is a completely different manner just based on the makeup of their people, uh, strengths, and various personalities. Something I think that's really unique to my approach here is that when I dive in and work with each one of our teams, I'm really consistently looking for what works well with each individual team and then how we can take that to other teams as well as all of Fusion to make uh, both them as well as our organization the very best. And serving as a, let's say, connector of people and galvanizer of ideas is really where I love to spend my time there. Absolutely. You can't take a one size fits all approach to each team or each individual as well, thinking about the employee experience and personalization at scale. And we know that employees are, are looking for that too. Teammates, one study found that 47% of employees reported that their stress in general was higher than anything they'd experienced in their career. And only 37% agreed their organization really understood what they needed both in their personal lives and for their families. How are you really showing up for the full lives of employees as you scale? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Fusion prides ourselves in really allowing for work-life balance. And despite our massive growth, uh, we've ramped up hiring like absolutely never before to continue to make those workloads as manageable as we can on our people. Um, something we've shifted to is an honor-based PTO system that allows for all of our people. And what I think is the most important is to never miss those moments that matter in their lives. 
um, whether it's, you know, kids school program, uh, friend visiting in town, or even something like a mental health day where, again, putting what happens in life always uh, comes paramount or more important to what's going on in Fusion. And something unique to Fusion uh, and something that we really stress on a daily basis, first when you start, as well as ongoing throughout your career, is the emphasis of each employee and their why. Um, for me, their why is what gets you out of bed every single morning, what inspires you both in your life and in your career, uh, what drives the decisions you make and, and who you really are as a person, and everything that we can do as an organization to foster that, to add fuel to their fires. Uh, in turn, this allows our people to feel fulfilled and really makes going to work more than just the job that they do. Absolutely. Supporting those moments that matter, really the gift of time, something a resource people cannot get back as well. I love to hear that too. And I know before uh, we started the recording, we were chatting about the immense growth that you and the team have seen uh, as well. I believe uh, just the, the I estimated stats for the team has grown two to three times since 2019. Uh, how have you intentionally led this team growth and what advice do you have for folks who are currently in that mode of hiring uh, a lot of new team members? Definitely. Um, and I know we're going to touch on th this possibly later here, but that theme of burnout, it is a thousand percent real. Um, and everything you can do to really support your employees through this rapid growth and um, changing of processes, systems, rapid hiring, uh, again, supporting your employees is an absolute necessity. At Fusion, each year we have what we call our thematic goal. And this is what we say is our most important North Star for our leaders and all employees for that year. And if anyone is spending significant time like outside of the initiatives within that thematic goal, um, we want to either correct that or make sure that any of that is captured again within that overall North Star. And 2022 for us is all about two themes. It's about our people and it's about the scaling of our business. So this fits back into, again, that theme of rapid growth. Um, when it comes to our investment in our people, um, I think kind of all things from the engagement of our remote employees to the development of our leaders. We want our people to grow, develop, be fulfilled. And that is what kind of spawned or spurred in that uh, first main theme for 2022. Number two, then, when we think about scaling, again, our rapid growth here, we map out processes, systems, technology advancements, um, and other efficiencies and model out kind of how we can effectively grow while still protecting our people and avoiding burnout. So kind of to, to wrap that all together into um, one big bow here, I would say my biggest advice for any other companies that are experiencing this rapid growth that we've seen kind of since pre-COVID, um, really keep those two themes. And I think we got it right with our North Stars in 2022, but those two themes of people and the efficient scaling of your business, keeping those pinnacle and top of mind as you make business decisions. Absolutely. You need to keep your people in mind as you're scaling your business and how can you set folks up for success with efficiencies, processes, those resources as well. Uh, we know that a lot of folks uh, over the past few years too have been thinking about how can we really support employees because you, like you said, burnout is really re real in terms of job related, those life milestones and just everything that is going on uh, in the world at large too. Uh, and the adoption of radical flexibility raises the number of employees who are actually high performing in their jobs as well. So it's literally a win-win for everyone. What role does radical flexibility play in your company culture? Of course. One, I love the term radical flexibility. I think <laughs> that's, the first, that's the first time I've really ever heard it, uh, but I'm definitely a fan. Um, radical flexibility at Fusion. Uh, I would say this is all about, and I'll actually take it back. This is various concepts that we had. We actually brought in an external sales trainer uh, the past couple of weeks here. And a theme that he really helped me cement this idea that was in my head was this idea of a goal clock versus a time clock. And again, having those goals really drive what you do versus uh, the time that you spend in the office or with your colleagues or, or whatever that is. And to me, it's not about having, you know, butts and seats from 7.59 a.m. to uh, 5.01 p.m., but rather it's how every individual person contributes to the organization. Uh, so no matter where you're working, at the, at the office, anywhere across the country, again, we've had a rapid increase in the amount of hires we've had from a remote standpoint, but we always have those non-negotiables. Um, first, it's all about our core values here at Fusion, and that's being humble, driven, and positive. 
and then being a great team player, having great communication and meeting those team objectives. So as long as those non-negotiables are met, that theme of radical flexibility, again, which I'm now uh, officially a fan of, um, that can all come into play. Absolutely. Those non-negotiables, and I've heard a lot of folks talking about that as well, setting up an environment where people can really feel empowered to do their work in the most efficient way possible as well. Uh, we also have seen kind of the changing role of leaders over the past few years, too. And I want to know how you like, really empower folks across the organization, no matter what department um, or manager level they're at as well, to really practice that equity-driven leadership, thinking about how can they really be uh, equitable, inclusive in their in their day to day, and also think about kind of talent and, and culture, and really fostering that great place to work when Andrew uh, is not in the room. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, similar to, and this is a theme we touched on earlier, but that theme of how every single person at Fusion has a chance to impact our culture. I think the same goes with having a chance to make an impact as a leader. Uh, you've got the traditional. Um, again, we allow our people to be leaders by true title. And side note, again, through our rapid growth, we've promoted, let's say, dozens and dozens to our leadership team, which has been so very exciting. But also having that ability to be a leader, even without the title. And that's something we strongly encourage through a lot of different opportunities that we offer. Uh, I think think of everything really from volunteer efforts in the community, uh, leading one of our several ERGs, our internal book clubs uh, that foster kind of great communication and self-reflection. Um, facilitating trainings and I mean so much more, but our people really have a chance to lead every single day, every single day, no matter what their role is at Fusion. I love that title or no title. Everybody has that impact and that leadership role, their impact on their team members too, as well. And I think when we're talking about those relationships, building trust, a great place to work, uh, you foster an environment where people feel like they can give positive, negative, constructive, innovative, all kinds of feedback to really push the company forward, to push their team forward. Can you share an example of how employee feedback has inspired a change, whether it's big or small, in a policy strategy or initiative at Fusion Medical Staffing? Yeah, definitely. I'll actually take us back to something we touched on earlier, but one of the most ta tangible and recent examples of, a, again, a huge um, initiative here, but it was at one of our leadership offsites that we had this last winter. And side note, strongly encourage uh, that concept of having a leadership offsite. It's our managers, directors, and executives. We meet at least every quarter um, to go over kind of what matters most to all of our teams, as well as do a lot of around the horn type updates. But uh, that really helps with the transparency, communication, and really the connectedness of our, of our leadership groups. But again, to take us back to last winter, we went through an exercise as we were trying to define and figure out, again, those North Stars or um, our 2022 thematic goal. What we did is we broke into small groups and in those small group discussions talked about really, again, what mattered most to each individual team from a people standpoint, process improvements, or really anything under the sun. And this brainstorming list, we kept a, and continued to bucket um, where all those ideas continue to fall into. And those themes of people and scaling kept bubbling to the top. And then that's what um, really helped to define what our 2022 North Stars or thematic goal um, was. And actually, another just fun, quick example I just thought of here was, um, and we, we did it actually in, in the midst of COVID, um, reminder to me uh, after this, I would love to roll this out again uh, sometime here later this year, but we did just a fun fusion shark tank where solicited ideas from all across the companies, and we had dozens of different teams and ideas submit, again, ideas around culture initiatives, other benefits, or just simply fun ideas to connect our people and continue to make Fusion better. Uh, and that resulted in some great action items and, again, continued connectedness of our people. Absolutely. I love those two examples. I think it's really important to not only receive that feedback, set up that environment where people feel like their voice is going to be heard, and then act on it as well through communication, through action. And I think both of those uh, kind of examples and initiatives exemplify that too. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about burnout earlier and it's something that we continue to discuss because people continue to be uh, burned out as well. How are you thinking about proactively getting ahead of burnout and setting up those non-negotiables for your team and company uh, so people feel like they are set up for success? I know you mentioned a little bit around the gift of time, uh, but wanted to ask directly too. Of course. So Fusion's core values, humble, driven, positive, again, I touched on earlier, but 
our rapid growth these past couple of years, you couple that then with incredibly driven and amazing people that we have that work here. And this theme of burnout is so incredibly real. Um, we've tried to combat it with continuous hiring, finding ways really to work with our individual people and teams to, in terms of how to turn it off um, and always allowing that flexibility to really treasure and make sure that those moments that matter uh, always happen or are prioritized. But something in a different spin uh, that I want to take this is the concept of strengths and weaknesses and what is on every single person's plate here at Fusion. You always think of when you think of strengths and weaknesses is strength is something you're good at, weakness is something you're bad at. Everything you can do to keep doing more and more things that you're good at, great. And then things that you're bad at, let's keep taking those off your plate. But we've done a lot of individual and team assessments here at Fusion um, for the past year or two that, again, has re or decoupled, let's say, those that ideology where, to me, strengths is, hey, something that gives you energy and joy, makes you want to come to work. Uh, a weakness then, again, not something you're bad at. Rather, you could even be good at that. But a weakness is something that, as you continue to do it, it drains you. It, it takes joy away from your day and you know gives you the Sunday scaries or whatever you want to call that. So everything that we can do to work collaboratively within the team, to make things more efficient, to continue to move the needle and really add more and more strengths to every single person's plate, that to me directly um, combats and really attacks that theme of burnout um, for every individual employee. And I also want to, let's say, preface this by by no means have we solved this issue and it continues to remain a really top of mind issue for all of our leaders and employees at Fusion. Absolutely. I think a lot of the, the themes and uh, programs we're talking about are not kind of check the box. You're like, okay, we're doing these three things that burn out so we don't have to think about it next year and company culture in the, in the same vein as well. And it sounds like you're thinking about this in a really intentional way at Fusion. I would love to kind of ask in your experience, so not necessarily at Fusion, just things you're seeing out in the world. Are there any common mistakes you're seeing companies or leaders making in their people, talent, and culture strategy, of course, without uh, naming names? Yeah, yeah I, I will not do that. But I would say the most common thing, in my opinion, is how companies define culture is sometimes backwards. Uh, so many times you've got happy hours, social events, all that, and people think that that relates directly to employee satisfaction and happiness versus I think and happy hours, social events, like I noted, definitely have their place. And there's definitely a ton of them at Fusion. Um, we have a ton of fun on these four walls and across the country. But a lot of these kind of, let's say, I'll call them soft culture initiatives um, need to really have a deeper meeting or a next step. And they should be designed to foster great relationships uh, really across the organization so that Let's say if it's on a Friday, the next week at the office, there's even better communication and better trust amongst employees. And making sure that with everything in mind, you've got trust, transparency, great communication, you've got those deep relationships. And with all of that, you've got the ability to have really effective conflict amongst which that effective conflict then leads to the very best decisions for your organization. That to me is what that hard culture is all about. And these hard culture themes are truly what can take again your organization to the next level. Absolutely defining it by those connections, which can be built in these social events, but it's not just about that as well. And really thinking about how you define uh, company culture and what framework you're using is really important there too. Andrew, is there anything that I didn't ask that you want to share with folks who are listening or underscoring any uh, kind of key insights you hope people bring with them after hearing our conversation here today? Yeah, thanks, Christina. Again, just want to thank you again for having me on the podcast. But I feel like my recent soapbox, either um, with fellow colleagues here, or just some of my friends around, around town that are leaders at various organizations, but I would say there's no better use of your time as a leader than FaceTime with your employees. Uh, so many times we see leaders get caught in the weeds or need to spend time to send that one last email or get that one last thing done where I think having that really impactful conversation with someone on your team or having that open, open door policy can make such a greater impact on uh, all of your employees in your organization. So using your time wisely uh, as a leader, as you drive culture is, let's say my final thoughts there. I love it. I think that is a great uh, kind of insight to end on as well. That face time with your team is, is so important in investing in that time. Andrew, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. Thank you so much, Christina. Take care.
Of course, and as a reminder for folks who are listening and all voices, we really believe in both employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood. And know it's a requirement for the business to really succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.